In this edition of One American News Investigates, we look at Dominion voting systems and its role in the 2020 presidential elections. Glitches, errors, money trails to powerful Democrats. Dominion is just one of three major companies providing voting systems to America. But Dominion captured headlines when it was discovered it had glitched 6,000 votes, giving Biden a fraudulent win. This was not an isolated event. In 2016, Antrim County, Michigan, affirmed its Republican loyalties by voting Trump 62 percent, beating Clinton by 4,000 votes. Fast forward four years, and Antrim County was shocked to find itself voting Joe Biden over Trump by 3,000 votes, a complete flip from the last presidential election. Something was very wrong. When the county set to work with a manual recount, they discovered a ghastly error. 6,000 Trump votes were accidentally tallied for Biden. RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel held a press conference noting a litany of irregularities in Michigan. But when it came to Antrim County, the irregularity was potentially much bigger in scale. When they inquired with the clerk, they were told it was a software issue and it was corrected. But now we know that 47 counties use that same software. It was certainly odd. Republicans wanted an investigation to ensure no more such mistakes happened elsewhere. However, Michigan's Democrat Secretary of State was quick to pronounce such concerns as ridiculous, immediately denouncing any suspicion of technical foul play. Quote, the software did not cause a misallocation of votes. It was a result of user human error. See, no need to investigate. After all, it's 2020 and software errors are impossible, right? I'm here to tell you that the electronic voting machines Americans got to solve the problem of voting integrity, they turned out to be an awful idea. One vote for McCain. <laughs> That's because people like me can hack them all too easily. That was some professor out of Michigan back in 2018 in the New York Times. Ignore that. The system Michigan Democrats don't want Republicans to investigate? The system part of what DHS proclaimed, quote, the most secure in American history? Meet Dominion Voting Systems, a Canadian firm. Dominion is one of three companies providing 90% of America's voting systems. Dominion serves 28 U.S. states, including battlegrounds like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arizona, all of Georgia, and Nevada. Incidentally, Michigan was not the only battleground state to experience problems with Dominion. Georgia went all in with Dominion, buying 30,000 machines installed across the state. Just nine months before the general election, Georgia's Secretary of State boasted of his state's partnership with Dominion to install all these new machines. Dominion and the Secretary of State's office worked very closely together on making sure we had the staff here to get these things put through. A few months later, in Georgia's June primaries, Dominion proved to have a few hiccups. Don't take it from us. Here's PBS. The poll pads took as long as 30 hours to download the voter database, displayed the wrong races, and would randomly shut down. And the power-hungry ballot marking devices blew circuit breakers in numerous locations. Poll workers, many of whom had no hands-on training because of the pandemic, were often befuddled by the new technology. Indeed, even by the general election five months later, Georgia was still in trouble. They have not certified the elections, including two of the most populous in the state, between technical issues. Let's begin with Liza Lucas. She's live at Gwinnett County's elections office in Lawrenceville, where at thousands of votes are in limbo because of a software issue. There is an issue in Gwinnett County, as officials have told us, that 60,000 Gwinnett County ballots are in limbo after a software issue. And this mm. is according to the communications director of Gwinnett County. While all of this plays out before our eyes, Republicans demand investigations. But government officials demand we look away. There have not been any evidence of anything that would undermine the validity of this election, and it's time to move forward. Meanwhile, the Trump legal team under former New York mayor and prosecutor Rudy Giuliani disagreed. 
Antrim County put Dominion Systems front and center. Now we must dig deeper. Now we've got to look at how often did it break down in other parts of the state. And when you look back on the history of Dominion, which is a Canadian firm, it's made mistakes in the Canadian elections similar to that. The Trump legal team's Dominion wing is led by General Michael Flynn's attorney, Sidney Powell, who has long warned Americans the dangers of our election systems relying on foreign software. Mind you, no one is claiming that Dominion is solely responsible for the fiasco and the vote irregularities that defined the 2020 general election. But when we return, prepare to be stunned when you find out just how easy it is to manipulate votes through Dominion. Why one major state deemed Dominion dangerously easy to hack, and how one hacker read the user guide flagging stunning questions for the feds. We'll be right back. Methods of communication have changed throughout history with the advancement of technology. Since first declaring his candidacy in 2015, President Trump has relied on Twitter to share his thoughts directly with the American people. But the 45th president was not the first president to rely on the technology of the times to get his message out. Calvin Coolidge made the first presidential radio address in 1923, making his voice the most heard of any man in history. This was the first time people across the country could hear the president speak at the same time, all from the comfort of their own homes. A decade later, this evolved into Franklin D. Roosevelt's fireside chats, where the president could explain his policies with the feeling of a friendly conversation in the form of an evening radio broadcast. Television was still a very new technology in 1947, but that didn't stop Harry Truman from breaking ground as the first president to have a live televised address from the White House. This ushered in a new relationship between the White House and the media. Now, not only could Americans hear their president, they could see him as if they were in the very same room. The late 90s saw the rise of the Internet, and Bill Clinton saw this as an opportunity to speak directly with citizens. Clinton held the first presidential web chat in 1999, giving anyone with an Internet connection a chance to send questions to the president as the world watched live on TV. Calvin Coolidge believed speaking directly to the press was the best way to bypass Congress to speak with the people. By using Twitter, President Donald Trump modernized this idea for today's population. Like so many before him, President Trump is using the technology of the times, making sure his message is heard clearly and directly by Americans all over. No voting system is perfect. Here are the heads of the top three voting systems telling Congress as much. Is there any method of voting that's 100% secure? No. Uh, no. No. They go on to say their voting systems are mostly safe. But here's a Senate letter from December 2019 slamming these three companies. Election security experts have noted for years that our nation's election systems and infrastructure are under serious threat. The Senate letter then highlights how the top three voting systems, ES&S, Hart InterCivic, and Dominion Voting Systems, quote, have long skimped on security in favor of convenience, leaving voting systems across the country prone to security problems. The lawmakers who wrote this letter? None other than Senators Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, Ron Wyden, and Congressman Mark Pocan, all Democrats. One year later... Now that America is asking whether Dominion tampered with our votes in Joe Biden's favor, where are these Democrats now? In the last two years, Dominion aggressively marketed itself to every state in the union. And while Georgia went all in and lived to regret it, one state gave it a Texas-sized thumbs down. Upon testing Dominion machines and its accompanying systems, the state of Texas concluded Dominion was too, quote, fragile and error-prone and could not be trusted for safe and secure elections. So what makes the machines fragile and error-prone? Ron Watkins, a large systems data analyst, tells One American News after over a week poring over Dominion user guides, he was stunned by how easily ballots could be accessed by one person with access to one machine. With the Dominion system, you need to be most concerned about activist IT people. The operators system, in my opinion, have way too much power to control the internal features and settings of the system. 
Just reading the Dominion Manual, Watkins says he understands the system enough to devise an alarming number of ways to alter vote counts across an entire precinct using Dominion. I was looking at this manual with the mindset of a penetration tester. An administrator would have the ability to delete ballots, reset counts, delete entire batches, etc. There's a lot of things that they can do. Watkins notes, while there are legitimate reasons for such controls, there's no mention as to whether there's a way to track or hold users accountable for deleting or altering ballots. Dominion will train between two to six workers per county who are appointed by the county to undergo election systems training. These two to six workers are trusted to not tamper with the final tabulation and counts while transferring data between the ICC, which is the image cast central tabulation software, and the county. So this transfer process is literally just dragging some folders on a Windows computer onto a flash drive, then physically handling handing the flash drive to the county. What I want to know is during this handoff, are these people being watched by auditors or to make sure this flash drive isn't switched out for something else? Are, are these folders being dragged correctly onto the flash drive? Has the data been altered before or after it's been handed off? This is where the security problem magnifies. Do you trust the worker who logs into the tabulation mach machine to drag the correct votes onto the flash drive? Are they dragging all the votes? Theoretically, you could so swap the flash drive for a different flash drive. There's uh, no accountability there. And then once the county commissioner or whoever uh, accepts that flash drive gets the flash drive, do you trust them to not go in and edit the contents before they report it? As Georgia underwent its recount two weeks after Election Day, flash drives were found with uncounted ballots on them. Over 2,700 votes had been forgotten in the initial count. 1,500 of those votes were for Donald Trump, 1,100 for Biden. So another issue is the keys. The keys to the machine are digital devices. Uh, they, it's unclear what the device is. It might be like an RFID device or USB or, or something. But it is clear that it's a digital device that holds some kind of cryptographic key on it. If you lose this physical key to the machine, then you lose absolute security of the entire precinct. Say Philadelphia was storing these keys in a warehouse and they they were robbed and the only thing stolen were these keys and a laptop, then you should consider their entire election to be illegitimate because they have lost the physical security of the system. That's just what happened in Philadelphia one month before Election Day. Philadelphia police are investigating after somebody broke into an election machine warehouse and stole a laptop and a USB drive. The theft happened last night at the warehouse on the 3500 block of Scotts Lane in East Falls. Officials were quick to declare this theft had nothing to do with the election and was not malicious at all. An odd declaration. You don't catch the criminal, but you decide you know their motive? Interesting judicial logic, Philadelphia. Meanwhile, local reporter posted this video on social media where he's seen walking around that same warehouse without being noticed. Whoever stole those keys in, in Philadelphia has admin access. Do you trust a random thief who has administrative access to the voting machine? They could have theoretically been able to make as many keys as they want for Philadelphia. On election night, Donald Trump led Joe Biden by 800,000 votes, major precincts reporting. In the dead of night, that lead disappeared. Biden overtook Trump and took the whole state of Pennsylvania by 60,000 votes. That 60,000 vote bump came from the very Philadelphia county in which the drive and laptop had been stolen. Watkins' list of concerns about Dominion's vulnerabilities went on. Watkins found it strange that algorithms for ballots with just one candidate on it, called an undervote, were so complicated. And it is unclear what happens to these ballots. The computer may or may not throw out your vote. Another concern, right after the 2018 midterms, Pennsylvania made a custom request. They requested Dominion change the system to read a straight Republican or straight Democrat ballot, but oddly, read an individual candidate separately from the rest of the straight ticket choices below. I looked at the font they're using, and it's, uh, it's part of the Arial family of fonts, A-R-I-A-L, which is a sans serif font. And with this font family, a capital I and a lowercase l are nearly indistinguishable on a piece of paper. The person who designs the ballot and the race could theoretically put 
uh, Donald Trump in the Republican Party, not the Republican Party. And that would be a capital I instead of the L. And then everybody else on the Republican Party would just be in the normal Republican Party. In that situation, if you vote just straight party for the Republicans, then Trump would not get a vote. And there are a lot of, I've been hearing a lot of issues of uh, Trump performing poorly in heavily uh, Republican uh, areas. Next, Watkins says, the machines are not supposed to connect to the internet, but there don't seem to be physical safeguards against connecting to internet through the store-bought laptops. If these computers, if even one of these computers was connected to the internet, like, if one election worker said, oh, I'm going to look at TikTok videos for the next hour for my break, then the entire precinct is compromised. But even these concerns were minor compared to what Watkins shared with us next. Dominion's algorithm for handling an anomaly, that is, a stray mark or bleed through from a Sharpie pen. So this is, this is the big one that I'm most concerned about. If the scanning system detects any anomaly on your ballot, then... You are not counted. What Watkins reveals next explains one of the strangest mysteries of the 2020 election. We'll be right back. Every day your body is engaged in a microscopic battle. And it's your immune system's job to detect, deflect, and destroy these invaders and to keep you healthy. One daily dose of Texas Superfood is loaded with the vitamins and minerals and nutrients from 55 raw fruits and vegetables. So your best defense these days is a healthy immune system. And Texas Superfood can help you get it. So if you can't, won't, or don't eat all your fruits and vegetables every day, Texas Superfood is made for you. Dogs in America are experiencing a health crisis, and the cause may be one specific thing in their diet. It's in hundreds of dog foods, and you may have already noticed warning signs like digestive problems, itching, bad breath, and odors, but the long-term impact can be far worse. Fortunately, world-famous veterinarian Gary Richter has a new trick to improve your dog's food at home without switching brands. To learn how to help your dog live a long, healthy life, just visit checkyourdogfood.com. That's checkyourdogfood.com. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a continuous glucose monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn about this groundbreaking new CGM technology. And if you have Medicare, you can get a new CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Shipping is free, and we'll even bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn how you can get your own continuous glucose monitor or CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Ron Watkins' analysis of Dominion voting systems is through a singular lens, that of an infiltration hacker. Through that lens, the machines are disastrously vulnerable. But as a systems analyst, the biggest red flag about Dominion was its algorithm where ballots with anomalies, bleed-throughs or stray marks, are set aside and not counted. What happens when your vote is not counted due to an anomaly, then a scan of your ballot gets saved into a folder on the ICC, the ImageCast central tabulation system. This allows for those two to six people who are trained by Dominion to go through the folder of anomalies and either delete or verify each of the ballots inside the folder. I believe it's called vote education, adjudication. These workers can theoretically see which candidates have been marked as votes on these anomalous ballots before they are verified and officially cast. So it's possible they could, in theory, handpick a certain party's vote to be verified while throwing out all the others. But it's the next point that stuns Watkins most. The biggest issue here is that the system for detecting anomalies can be set up by altering gamma settings on the scanner so that every ballot has an anomaly. This, in effect, by altering gamma settings on the scanner so that every ballot has an anomaly. This, in effect, 
allows those two to six trained people to go through and hand check every single ballot before they are verified and cast into the tabulation system as an actual vote. That last point explains to me how certain candidates can get 130,000 votes at once with zero votes going to the other candidate. It explains to me how or why vote workers in places like Arizona might have given Sharpies to uh, certain voters because they might have wanted that specific vote to be caught by the anomaly system and uh, hand verified at a later time. Watkins says this is a task for the feds. My recommendation is for data forensics teams, federal data forensics teams to seize or subpoena the ICC image cast central vote tabulation machines, which are just Windows 10 off the shelf machines, go through and see how many votes hit or how many votes arrived into the the folder, which is specifically set up for anomalies. This one bug has to affect an entire election. And it's not even a bug. This is a feature. One that would allow enormous batches by the hundreds of thousands to be decided on by a few unmonitored workers. Your vote doesn't matter in these districts uh, with the Dominion uh, machines in them because these two to six people trained by Dominion have ultimate control. It doesn't take a genius to realize that setting the gamma levels incorrectly makes all the battle become anomalies, which you can then go through later and adjudicate. If I was Trump, I would investigate those two to six people per county first. Watkins is of the opinion any competent hacker, thief, or paid-off poll worker could game the Dominion system and alter hundreds of thousands of votes. But a bigger question lurks. To what extent was this actually designed by the top on purpose? In September 2020, FEC United founder Joe Oldman had infiltrated Antifa to uncover journalists who were active members of the Antifa group attacking his company in Colorado. Joe, you infiltrated an Antifa conference call this past September and accidentally came upon a top Dominion Voting Systems executive named Eric Coomer. Describe that call and what it led you to find. It was interesting how the, how the call started. Somebody says, who's Eric? He says, Eric's a Dominion guy. Someone actually said, you know, hey, go ahead. You know, told him to continue speaking. Um, and someone interrupts and says, uh, what are we going to do if effing Trump wins? And Eric responds, and I'm paraphrasing this, by the way, um, don't worry about the election. Trump is not going to win. I made effing sure of that. And then they started laughing and somebody says F and right. And so I just put it a simple Google search to start, which was Eric Dominion, uh, Denver, Colorado. And Eric Coomer came up immediately under Dominion voting systems. Turns out Eric Coomer held a top position at Dominion. With a PhD in nuclear physics, Coomer joined Dominion as vice president of engineering and holds several patents with Dominion, ensuring users can adjudicate ballots from the machines. The very function Ron Watkins pointed out as a huge red flag. After the election, Altman was sent an article highlighting Eric Coomer from Dominion. Altman started looking into Eric again. Eric was the director of strategy and security at Dominion and a shareholder in the company. When I got into his Facebook page, uh, that's when things really started to kind of come together for me that, you know, that Eric Coomer was this, you know, that he, he was not just Antifa. He was um, he was responsible for putting his finger on the the. Uh, scales of our election. And Dominion seemed to be a friendly place for such anti-Trump sentiment. Coomer goes on to travel to battleground states all of 2019. Whatever they were building to coming into the 2020 election, that he made sure it happened. He made sure that um, that Dominion voting systems was in all the battleground states uh, for the 2020 election. Eric shared three folders of screenshots capturing the disturbing profile of Eric Coomer starting back in the 2016 election. So this is a um, rant. He, he says rant, Facebook friend land open call. If you're planning to vote for this autocratic, narcissistic, fascist, uh, asshat, blowhard, and his Christian jihadist VP pick, unfriend me now. No, I'm not joking. I'm not for reason, political discourse, and healthy debate. You could see how he started to just become unhinged. So he actually talks about the fact that his work has the same mentality that he has um, towards being anti-Trump. Oldman shares over 80 images of posts Coomer shared on his pages. The Antifa Manifesto, songs like Dead Prez, Body Count, Cop Killer, F the USA. 
Once Altman begins the expose, Coomer panics. He locked down everything. He scraped the internet of everything having Eric Coomer on it. So they even went into lead candy. Dominion took them off their website, removed them from the uh, board position on their site. They've literally made Eric Coomer a ghost. As we were putting this investigation together, the public listings of employees for Dominion were fast dwindling from public purview. But we also came upon a friend of Coomer, a woman named Penelope Chester Starr. She works at Dominion too. As communications director, her resume reads, Clinton Foundation and vice president of the Bill and Hillary Clinton cash cow, Tenio. Tenio booked Bill Clinton's speaking engagements. Chester Starr, also organizes anti-Trump rallies in Canada. These are just two Dominion employees of dozens more with clear anti-Trump allegiances. In Coomer's case, he was in a position of power to actually act upon his rage against Trump and Trump voters. What does he mean when he says, Trump won't win, I made effing sure of that? Nothing? According to DHS's former cybersecurity director, Chris Krebs, this was our most secure election in history. Nothing to see here. Incidentally, Krebs's now infamous most secure election in history memo was co-written with the endorsement of the election commission. Dominion is on that commission. Dare we dig deeper? We'll be right back. Political correctness operates within the same guiding principles that any hate group does. It demands that everyone look, sound, and act in a particular way. We should not be afraid to speak our minds, no matter how harsh our thoughts might be. The downfall of free speech is the downfall of a free society. In May 1991, President George H.W. Bush gave a commencement speech at the University of Michigan. In it, he identified political correctness as a threat to America. The notion of political correctness has ignited controversy across the land. And although the movement arises from the laudable desire to sweep away the debris of racism and sexism and hatred, it replaces old prejudice with new ones. It declares certain topics off limits, certain expression off limits, even certain gestures off limits. What began as a crusade for civility has soured into a cause of conflict and even censorship. Disputants treat sheer force, getting their foes punished or expelled, for instance, as a substitute for the power of ideas. Throughout history, attempts to micromanage casual conversation have only incited distrust. They've invited people to look for an insult in every word, gesture, action. And in their own Orwellian way, crusades that demand correct behavior crush diversity in the name of diversity. There should never be another election conducted in this country, I don't care if it's for local dog catcher, using a Dominion machine and Smartmatic software. We have got to have an American company that uses paper ballots that we can all verify so every one of us can see that our vote is our vote. In the early 2000s, the election technology market had over 20 competitors. 20 years later, Dominion and two others dominate the voting technology market in America. This is a problem, especially if their Antifa-drenched engineers are hell-bent on deleting half of America's voice. If they're saying this in the open, what are they saying behind closed doors? In 2014, Dominion partnered with the Clinton Foundation. Dominion admits this, but assures all, their partnership with the Clinton Foundation has nothing to do with how Dominion tabulates votes across America. Go ahead, believe them. Big media, big tech, and big government demand that you do. Meanwhile, citizens like Joe Oltman, analysts like Ron Watkins, news outlets like OAN, and lawyers like Sidney Powell will keep asking the questions the FBI refuses to, and the left demands you ignore.